When it comes to writing common Lisp, one of the most important tools to have available to you is the REPL. Some would even say that the REPL is even more important than your text editor, which obviously isn't exactly the case because most people are using the REPL integrated with their text editor, which is kind of the common workflow with common Lisp. It gives us code completion, it gives us debugging, it gives us decompilation, it gives us all sorts of stuff that a lot of programming languages kind of make available but don't really make it a priority and usually it's kind of tacked on and it doesn't really make for a very good workflow. So usually if you guys are from nearly any other language that isn't a Lisp, you probably aren't used to using the REPL all that heavily or at all. Which is why in this video we'll be going over Sly, a very popular Emacs based REPL and it will hook into Emacs, we'll get it set up so you guys can get some code completion, use it for debugging, use it for compiling your code, all that sort of stuff and you'll realize just how powerful it can be. Now before we get too far into the video, I just wanted to clear up some terminology that might confuse you guys. So there is slime, there's sly, there's swank, and there's slank. Now that's a little bit confusing, but really the actual REPLs that you interface with are slime and sly. Slime is an older REPL, it's been around for quite a lot longer, that's been available for Emacs, and so sly is kind of a more modern take on it, it's a fork. And so as a result, when you hear slime, um, you can kind of just think of that as like an older version of Sly that has a few minor differences. Um, the main reason I'm going with Sly in this video is just because it's more maintained at this point. Now here you guys will see the Sly page on GitHub. There's a few different pieces of documentation and a little demo of the code completion options, the different entries for the REPL itself, recursive searching, a bunch of other stuff, which most of we will be going over in this video. Now, the first thing that you'll want to install is a common Lisp implementation. If you have no idea what to do for installing the Lisp implementation, just go with SBCL. It's the most common uh, or most popular common Lisp implementation. To install it on Arch, you would just do yay-s, or sorry, s spcl, sudo, and then we'll go ahead and install it. I already have it installed, so this really won't take any time. And then once it is installed, we can go ahead and actually start installing Slime. So to install Slime, if you guys are just using a normal installation of Emacs, you can do Alt-X, package install, Sly. All right, there we go. Now I've deleted Sly. So now if we did package install and we did Sly, it will go ahead and install Sly. Just give that a sec and it will compile all of the stuff for us. And so now that we've got Sly installed and SBCL, we can do Alt X and we could just call it Sly. Now we will get this little message if you have not set your inferior Lisp program. Instead, it will give you the option to use SBCL. We'll just hit Y and then it will go ahead and set up SBCL for us. This will just take a sec. And there we go. Now we have a REPL running and connected. So now we could even evaluate a simple Lisp expression doing plus one and two. Hit enter, there we go. So very straightforward. Now this is obviously a really simple use case, but let's go ahead and actually start writing some code. So now if we wanted to maybe make a scratch buffer that's set up for Lisp, we could just do Alt X, Sly Scratch, and that will create a scratch buffer that we can start compiling code in. Now, the first thing that you'll probably be tempted to do is do uh, something like plus one, two. And so if we wanted to evaluate this, a lot of people would do just control X, control E, um, kind of similar to how you would do that in Emacs, which does actually uh, work. So if you wanted to like evaluate Emacs Lisp and have the same workflow, that actually does work. This will be evaluated as common Lisp if you do control X, control E. By the way, I also just uh, set up my key cast down here so you guys can see the keys that I'm pressing. So if we were to go ahead and just do control X, control E, we would get that evaluated as you can see, Sly evaluate last S expression. And we could also do control alt X and that will also evaluate it. Sometimes we actually want to compile it. There are a lot of benefits to compiling it instead. And to compile, it's really simple. We just do control C, control C, and that will evaluate the defun, um, which is basically the outermost parentheses. So in this case, that's just evaluating the plus one and two. Um, but maybe if we wanted to do something like this, minus one, one, and we wanted to just compile that, that will actually compile the outmost uh, expression, not just the one that's closest to us. Now, just to kind of give you guys an example of what benefits you get out of this, you can kind of get hint type hinting um, and compilation error messages that are a lot more helpful, and they'll actually know like where like the error occurred. So if we did say um, plus hello one, and then we define name, and we did control X, control E, 
we will get a warning. But if we do Control C, Control C, we will actually get a warning with a little message down here. And we can actually kind of um, use Alt M, Alt N, and N, Alt N, um, and Alt P to kind of uh, jump to each of these messages. Obviously, there's only one here. And as you can see, the output is also um, stated down here in the REPL. Now, if we wanted to say, for example, um, we have a bunch of code, let's do name, um, and let's just make this, uh, we'll just have this return a string just really quickly. So now if we compile that by control C, control C, and then compile it again, it will run. I guess that's not really a good example. Let's actually just, uh, just to print that and then control C, control C, and you'll see that that actually runs it when it's compiled. So that's a pretty simple workflow to get going with. Now you can also obviously run this um, in the REPL if you wanted to, but it's not particularly necessary in most cases. Usually when you're compiling stuff, you're just wanting to build it. You're not actually trying to run things. Now, often it will get kind of annoying to compile each of the things one at a time. Maybe if you write multiple functions at a time or something like that. So to do that, do that on an entire file, you could do control C, control K. However, since this is a buffer, so this is a scratch buffer, it's not associated with a file. So that doesn't actually work in this case. There might be a buffer version of that. Actually, let's just see sly compile. Nope, doesn't look like it. But either way, usually you're not using a scratch buffer and writing a lot of code in it anyways. Now let's kind of show some of the more quirky for features. Now let's show some of the more uh, quirky features that you get available to you. So you do get uh, code completion available when you hit alt tab and it will give you this little pop-up thing down here. Familiar for those of you guys that are used to just the normal completion in Emacs out of the box, but it's not really what most people are looking for. And so to get around that, you can install a company which is a common plugin for Emacs. Alternatively, you can use Corfu. I'll link both of those down in the description. I'll just uh, disable Corfu mode, install company mode, and then you guys can go ahead and use that. It's just a bit easier to get started with if you're not familiar with uh, some of the stuff that's available in Corfu. And it's probably what you're already using if you're coming from something like Doom Emacs. So now to get the code completion, let's go ahead and do package install company. So we'll install company. This will take a few minutes and one sec. I'll just get right back to you. All right, now that we have company installed, we can just do alt X company, or you might want to even do global company mode. So global company mode is now enabled. And so now if I did N A M, it will give me completion for a bunch of different stuff. Say for example, if I wanted to do sequin sequence, it will give me completion for a bunch of different stuff. It also does fuzzy matching out of the box. So you could do Nate or N A M and it will complete that for you. So that can be pretty powerful. And alternatively, you can use Corfu if that appeals to you more. So now that you guys have code completion and you know how to compile code, that's probably the basic workflow that you'll have, but often something that you'll wanna do is do some debugging. And so probably the easiest way to do that that most people are used to is using print statements. So here we have some simple printing here, say if we wanted to print out this value, um, and then if we run three, we'll see that we get the result. But now say, okay, well, this print statement isn't necessary. We actually wanna get the value of it. Then if we compile it and run it, we will just get the final result. So say maybe there was another level in here and we did, let's just do minus th two, um, and this and this. And then if we compile that and run it, we'll get negative two. Maybe we weren't too sure like what's going on in here and you wanted to actually debug it. We can make use of something called stickers. They're basically an alternative to a print statement. So yeah, we could wrap this in a print statement, but it'll kind of break our command. Um, so it's not very helpful uh, in this use case. And then we end up printing it and then running it again. So it's not very helpful. So instead what we'll do is we can do control C, control S, control S. And you see that little spot right here that's marked in white. This is a sticker. Now, if you do control C, control C, that will compile it. And now that you can see it is blue, we now have a sticker there. So now if we run it again, you'll see nothing is different, but if we go back and we do control C, control S, so this is for all the sticker related stuff and R, it will actually replay each of the things. So we can see every time that it was evaluated what we got. And so we see, oh, it returned a negative three. So a negative three came out here and we added two to it. Okay, that's what, I, that makes sense. Um, and so then if we wanted to see how many, if it happened multiple times, maybe we did, I don't know, let's do loop for I from zero to 10, um, do. Okay. And then, so now we can run this and we'll see that, oh, we don't get any result, but we kind of want to know what's happening. Well, we can still use that sticker again. So if we did control C, control S, control R, you can hit yes to just say, 
throw away all those previous recordings that we had. We could see, okay, we got one, zero. Okay. We got one. Then we got two. Then we got three. So you can kind of like step through your code one at a time and watch it as it was recorded. So maybe if you didn't want to have too much overhead and you didn't want to be stopping your code, this would be useful. Um, but you could also do a sticker or a toggle break on sticker. So now if we run it again, we actually get an error when it hits that. And so we can actually um, enter the debugger. So we can say, okay, we get that error and we can go to this this and just see, um, I don't know, if we wanted to check the current state, we could run some evaluation. Um, okay, and then we could hit continue and then it takes us to the next time we break, continue, continue. And you can see that it's also giving us like the value of things and we could actually step into that and inspect it. Um, obviously the integer length isn't particularly important. Maybe I should have gone with a list or something actually. But there we go. So we can see like the integer length is this. These are all the values, um, all that sort of stuff. So this is pretty, pretty powerful. And you can even see the sticker where it was hit, the value right after it was hit. And when we go again, this is just before the sticker. So, and you can also just see like the stack trace and stuff like that. There's a lot of power that comes from uh, stickers that I, I'm always really surprised when people uh, use slime because I don't believe slime had something equivalent to this. Um, but I, this is something that I use literally all the time. Now to clear the sticker, we can just do control C, control S, K, um, control K. And so that will clear the sticker for us. Now there's a few other things that could be pretty helpful. So say for example, we have a global variable. So we'll just do def. So we could actually check its current state by just doing control C, capital I on it and hit enter. And this will inspect its current value. Now, obviously right here we can see, oh, it's set to four. Another thing that it's useful for is say maybe we did, um, I don't know, we can hit enter on like values in the REPL and it will actually inspect them. We could even do something crazy like say this is a, a hash table. So we could do make hash table name in D, compile that. And so we can do D and it gives us a hash map, which is not very helpful. But if we hit enter on it, we can actually see its value. So now if we do control C, control capital I and inspect it, we can see a bunch of different stuff. And it actually gives us options for things like clearing the hash map. We can remove an entry, all that sort of stuff, which is actually really powerful. And that's kind of where this sort of thing comes in. You have a lot of options for interfacing with things at the REPL level. Uh, and you could do these same inspecting things that we were doing before when you hit the debugger, like I was showing you guys before. Um, and just in case you guys are, sorry about that, my neighbor set off the fire alarm. Just in case you guys uh, don't know what I'm talking about when I say the debugger, if I did, I don't know, let's do just a um, leading quote and hit enter. Uh, oh, that's a bad example. Sorry, the debugger is actually, so if we do this and we hit um, control C, control C, we hit this error right here. And so this right here is the actual debugger. And so you can like select what to do next. Like you can abort. Um, so if we abort compilation, we will get into here. And when we actually enter this debugger, um, especially when it's a runtime error. So I don't know, let's say we do... All right, so this will divide by zero, which is obviously not okay to do. You're not supposed to. Um, so when I do run name and hit enter, we inevitably hit an invalid number of zero. And so if we go here, we can actually see that we actually have access to the REPL at the time. So we could see what its current state of things are. Oh, like D has, I don't know, this value in it and stuff like that, which could be pretty helpful. And it gives you a lot of options like to replace this function, um, call another form, all that sort of stuff. You'll get pretty comfortable with it pretty quickly when you work with Sly for a while. Uh, there's some other useful things. Like I believe if you do control U, control C, control C, um, this will compile with the maximum debugging values and stuff like that, um, which can really helpful. This is pretty much the basics and all the stuff that I use on a regular basis. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything else. Anyways, you guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll hopefully, I just wanted to give a shout out to my GitHub sponsors, Tall Guy Jenks, Palatinus, and Carr, who support me on GitHub sponsors. I really appreciate it. As well as Connor G for supporting me on Patreon, my sole patron. I really appreciate it. Um, and to all of you guys that are interested in supporting me, I also really appreciate it. It helps me keep the content consistent um, and it keeps me away from having to spend time working on side jobs. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. If you guys would like to learn more, feel free to hit me up on my Discord and let me know. Know. If you guys have any questions, I'll do my best to help you. Anyways, I'll see you guys later.